where we give a big thanks and Sunday light. If you wanna have faith, if you wanna have faith, if you want to walk in the light, if you want a place to go where you know everything is gonna be, everything is gonna be alright. At 11:59. Sunday morning, you're welcome to come in, sit down, and join in. A little time of worship where we give a big thanks at Sunday alive. At Sunday alive. At Sunday alive. Let's give God a hand. Let's give God a hand. Oh, come all ye faithful. Give God a hand. That's not a big enough hand for the God that we serve. Come on now. Captive is right.
What I want to do is want to welcome you and to share with you that here at 1159, this is our praise, worship, and testimony time. And I want you to know what a blessing it is to have the testimonies. You know, once again, uh, someone told me a long time ago when I was in, in the school uh, um, where we had Sunday school, and I think I was about in the, probably about the third or fourth grade. And they said, do you understand that the Bible is nothing but testimonies? Testimonies of how God is and testimonies how we interact with the life that we have and the problems and concerns we have. There's power in testimonies. So even like King Ahaz, he had a testimony. His testimony like, hey, I don't give a dang about anything. I'm the king, okay? And then God does what? He will humble you to let you know there's nothing in this world that's greater than he himself, Jesus Christ. And that's the joy and that's the testimony time. So I'm going to begin by first of all saying to you, I want you to look in your heart and feel, is there a testimony? Is there something? I don't care if it's brief. I don't care if it's long. If there's something that you want to share, a testimony that comes from your heart, a testimony that will allow us to know that, yes, God is alive and well. If there's a testimony here, I will ask you to please just stand up and just please offer it, a testimony to who God is in your life or what God has done. Please, if there's someone here. I'm Bill Smith, and um, over two years ago, <clears throat> over two years ago, uh, I was diagnosed with a a cancer of <clears throat> the colon of the uh, take your time. Yeah, take your time. <clears throat> it's all right now. It's all right. Prostate, and I was <clears throat> at a point where I had to go back and have a preoperative physical. When I had the preoperative physical, I learned that I had lung cancer. And while I was there being told I had lung cancer, the spirit came to me and told me that I didn't have to worry about anything. Mm. The next week, I learned that I had cancer of the liver. And relying on the spirit, I didn't worry about anything. Because the next week, I learned I had a brain cancer. And that's been over two years ago. I called my good friend and pastor and told him what my condition was, and he prayed with me. And my former pastor, Monty Norwood, down in Georgia, prayed with me. My current pastor prayed with me. And I told them all that the Spirit had told me that I would be okay. That's right. I've never worried. So my testimony to you is, if God speaks to you and tells you not to worry, don't worry. All right, amen, amen. You like that? Don't worry, amen. Um, a little over a year ago, me and my children moved to Detroit, Michigan, and where a lot of my family is at, and we left behind almost everything. And so, you know, in our new home, I was kind of complaining, like, oh, I don't have all my decorations and furniture that I'm used to having. And um, I just didn't feel right. I was like, we don't have anything anymore. You know, it just was really frustrating. Um, and then we were in a really bad home invasion. And, you know, some really bad guys came in and, you know, just did awful things. Um, to me and also to my children. And they took everything, all of our flat screens, the kids' game systems, computers, both of my vehicles. And after that, it was kind of like, I was complaining and feeling so bad, like we really didn't have anything. But at that point, we really didn't have anything. But I realized that we had our lives, and me and my children, we had each other. So it was like at that point that my eyes were kind of open, and I realized I am blessed. All right. And I won't complain anymore. And when we came here, because the guys came back to the house again, um, we had nothing. 
you know, we moved in, you know, I was barely able to pay the first month's rent and deposit, and we slept on the hardwood floors for about a couple months, no TV or anything. And um, it's been a struggle since we've been here because I have absolutely no family, but we've been here a year come Thanksgiving, but everything is all right. <laughs> everything is all right, and I'm so thankful because I know that there are people that have lost their lives in certain those situations and that there are people that are in a worse situation than what I'm in. Amen. So, I mean, I'm just thankful. And I just thought I'd share that. Amen. This will be real quick. This has been a really lousy year for me. <laughs> and uh, last week, now my father was my idol and he was the kindest, most loving man alive and I rarely, rarely ever dream about him. But in my dream, he put his arms around me and held me, mm. and I cried. And I knew that I wasn't alone. Amen. Amen. Powerful, powerful testimonies. Let us please stand and let us sing together. Mary, did you know? Amen. Please be seated. Dear God, we ask that these few moments, these very brief moments that we will spend now, be spent with you, knowing that in our lives you continue to speak and all is well. Amen. Isaiah 7.10 says, And the Lord spoke. You know, sometimes in our Bible we have some of the most, you know, brief words. Like, 
you know, it says, I guess one of them was like, Jesus wept. You remember? Anybody ever heard that one? Yeah, Jesus wept. And it just tells you exactly what's going on. In verse 10 in Isaiah 17, and the Lord spoke. What are these messages for us right now? We, these messages basically say to you, did you hear that my good friend, when he said the Lord spoke because, don't worry. Did you hear Barb when she said that, you know, hey, this is my fault. I hugged you, it's gonna be all right. Did you hear, did you hear our guest, Mrs. Taylor, talk about the fact that she knows that everything is gonna be all right. Take everything, I don't care, it's gonna be all right. You know, the bottom line to all this, you have to understand that God is still speaking. God is speaking to you and to me. Don't worry about anything. Dell and I have gone through so much this year. This has not been the, the easiest year for Dell and I. It's by far the most difficult year in my ministry, without a question of a doubt. But the bottom line is that God is still speaking. And there's hope. Do you realize that these things now that are popping up now, have you heard of these new services? They're called Blue Christmases. You hear about them now? Blue Christmases are springing up all over. There was an article in the newspaper about Blue Christmases. You know, my mentee, she has Blue Christmases. Many of our UCC churches now are having Blue Christmases. So what's a Blue Christmas? They come together because there's pain at Christmas. The loss of a loved one, you feel all alone. The doctor hasn't given you the best diagnosis. But so what happens is you come together as a family and you embrace Terry and say, Terry, even though your husband won't be with you this Christmas, you are loved and you are family and everything is going to be all right. You do these things. You get to this point where you understand there's an importance of being church and not playing church, of being able to say, yes, I hurt. But you know something? God's got a word for you. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's going to be all right. So hear this biblical verse once again. And the Lord spoke. Amen. We would now like to say to you, here's a chance for us once again to continue to worship God. What I want you to do, first of all, if you wouldn't mind, just in this very brief moment, don't spend a lot of time. I want you to please stand up and I want you to hug one another and just say to them before we have our communion offering that I thank God for you. When you understand the biblical narrative about this time which was called communion, you will understand that when Jesus sat down with his disciples, he knew that one of them was going to betray him. You know that he knew that one was going to betray him. But still again, he put forth the spirit of hospitality and said, this is the body which I am going to give for you I'm going to break it and I'm going to bless it so that you will always remember who I am and that I am in you. So do not doubt, do not worry. God is alive within you. And we found this out a long time ago. I can't remember what year it was that if you cut, we all bleed the same color blood. This blood is important. This is the blood of the lamb that was shed for each and every one of us. So don't worry, don't fret. Understand that God is a God that will be with you, will never fail you or forsake you. So I ask you as you come forth, we will dip Christ's body into his blood. Place an offering if you're able. And let us experience the joy of knowing that Jesus Christ is alive and well this day. Won't you please come?
Gentlemen.